Hello and welcome back everyone. My name is Arvid and in today's video I want to talk about guard rays or volume scattering, like the nice effect which happens when light shines through clouds or through environments which are really foggy and have dust or dirt in the air like the forest here or somewhere in this cave. Also you see this effect in churches quite often. I don't have the proper model to show you the specifics, but I show you the practical approach how to create this shader. So let's jump into Maya, where I have a simple scene prepared. It is just a basic chair, and for now, nothing is special for this. I have a light, which is a spotlight, which is shining from here. Let's just make it bigger, like so. Um, first, I want to start by showing you the RPR session. This is my current render. And what I want to do now is create a light, just a simple Maya spotlight. Uh, create or for lights or light spotlight. So I've got my spotlight here. And I want to position it like this. Increase the exposure. Don't work with intensity. Go to Arnold tab and use the exposure stuff. Or you also have samples, which should be on two on low AA samples. And let's just see what we got for now. Quite reflective ground, but I'm just interested in in the look on the chair. So let's increase the exposure, maybe 10, even more. So now you see some some light occurring on the surface of the chair. Um, it would now be nice to actually see a light beam. So all you got to do is go to the render globals, head over to Arnold Renderer, go to Environment, and click the swatch here on the right hand side, and choose Volume Scattering. It creates a node called AI Volume Scattering, and in here you've got several attributes. The color is the general fog color or the scatter color. The density is how much particles are in the air, and the other ones are mostly not not used, but you can read through each attribute in the Arnold guide, which explains what attenuation does and what it is useful for. So um, for now, let's just increase the density to add some particles. So immediately you can see the effect happening and it's super fast in Arnold. So if I pan around, you can see what is actually happening and the effect is quite dramatic. So let's just move the light a bit. So something like this. And you can control penumbra angles or whatever you want to do on the spotlight and it will affect the fog in real time. So the first thing I want to do is show show you what uh, gobos are. The term gobo comes from the film set, which is what they did um, to create shadow effects or something like this on the, on a film set. So where's the penumbra? So here, so if you just uh, ch uh, change this, you can see what is actually happening and you can really have some nice control over the light beam. So a gobo, let's add this. So gobo you can find in the Arnold tab, light filters, add a light filter, and then you have several ones you can add. And the gobo is just a uh, something like a light blocker, something similar like that. So let's see, the gobo is here, and it wants to uh, it wants a texture. So for now, let's just um, create a. What do you want? Let's let's just say we create a AI noise. I'm not quite sure if this will look nice, but we will see. So what do we have? You can see there is now a pattern appearing in here. And you can change the scale. And now you get a dramatic effect. Something like, I don't know, you've got some light patches, some fog patches or something like that. You can see now it gives way more realism to your volume fog as if there's some patches which are uh, not so dense and, and particles and you can move them you can animate this so there's some movement some wind interaction something like this and it will really um, bring your renders to life if you got some interaction so the next thing I want to do is talk about IES lights IES lights are physically lights which um, give you a nice light profile 
And you can get them if you just Google for IES light profiles or visit Philips or Osram pages and check for their light profiles, which you can download and make use of in your renders. So let's delete the spotlight here and enable the spot, which is a IES light. And is this, yeah. So to create one, just go to your Arnold menu, which is most probably on the top for you guys. Uh, go to lights, photometric light, and this is how it looks like. You can plug in here a IES light, and you've got the same controls uh, like on normal lights. So this is the spotlight where I have a path to the IES light, and I've got some values prepared. So if I start IPR now, you can see that I get a nicer, way nicer beam. There is like a hot spot in the middle, and then you get these nice fall off on the sides. So this is actually all I wanted to show you guys. Um, one thing, let's create a sphere quickly just to see how it, it is intersecting. So I've got the sphere, and you can see the nice shadow being created here from the sphere. If I move this closer into the beam, you can see the effect happening quite nicely. So this is what volume rays are. And another cool thing, it actually works with refractive surfaces. Um, for instance, when you go to church and you see the, those nice colored glass panes and you, a light shines through that, you get actually a colored uh, ray from that uh, glass. So I have prepared a little scene um, in the geo wall, which is essentially a wall and a glass pane. On, on the glass, I've got a simple ramp in the transmission color, just something like this. I've added a noise value here at the bottom, which uh, just randomizes the positions. And to get this to work, you have to set the surface on the Arnold to be uh, non-opaque, which means that the shadows are being tinted. So um, let's just enable the glass light, which is also a IS profile. Oh, it was actually the other one. It was actually this one. So this one is just the same light, which shines through the glass, and then well, we'll see the light beam happening here on the side. So, and this is exactly what you get. So this is your nice colored light. A light is behind it, for instance, the sun or whatever, shines onto the surface, and then you get a nice colored ray from this. something like this and I think if you really have a proper image here or whatever you get really good effects happening if you want to create something similar like this like really crisp and sharp rays um, you can achieve this using a uh, gobo as well so now let's head over to Maya again and let's create another light Arnold light Maya spotlight and um, Let's just position it in front of the chair and increase the exposure to 10 or something. Uh, 10 would be great. There we go. So now we have the basic um, ray again. And all you got to do to get this detailed gobo or light ray is um, add an AI gobo which is being added. And then for a slide map, you can choose a picture or whatever you want. And just for the tutorial sake, I will just uh, will use a grid and you can immediately see what is happening. The grid is breaking up the rays and we get this nice looking effect. And to control this, you can, I don't know, ch ch uh, change the attributes here. You can uh, repeat this a bit more so you get more repetitions, stronger effects. Like this would be like a laser show, for instance. You get these really detailed light beams. You can see what is happening here. And you've got all the power just using, you can plug in any uh, picture map or whatever. And if you go to the Arnold side, if you go to guide, and uh, then under lights, you've got light filters and you've got gobos. 
and you can exactly see what is going on. Um, you can create patterns like this if you just uh, create a caustic, uh, connect a caustic map to this or whatever. It's pretty good explained in here. You can create these nice light effects. Very powerful, very fast to render and you get really nice looking results. Um, I hope you did enjoy this uh, short tutorial on volume scattering. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and happy rendering. Thank you guys.